What is up my ninjas? I'm Strident and today we are taking a look at the Power Rangers Legacy 2017 Power Rangers figures from the movie. Now, I had waited a while to get these and I got the majority of the team all at once and I had to wait to find the Pink Ranger and I finally just settled and got her online. Um, this line, man, this these designs, this movie, there was so much back and forth about what would work and what doesn't work and blah 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 and people just don't get it and the whole point is that the comparison of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers to Zoo Ranger is that Mighty Morphin is alien whereas Zoo Ranger is high fantasy um I feel like these designs capture the whole alien feel that Saban and company were going for and it aptly aptly separates it from its predecessor, what it was based on, what it essentially was a bootleg of, you know what I'm saying? They actually did something different. Now, between me and my son, we got a lot of the line. We got offerings from all over. The, the, the Legend, the Legacy series, the five inch style ones, and uh, I got the Zords. Uh, I liked their approach with these figures way better than the standard Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The, the figures themselves feel a little bit heftier. There's way more detail, more paint. There's more, uh, uh, I don't know, the figure just feels substantial. I don't have a whole bunch of floppiness on all of the figures like I did with, uh, you know, the Mighty Morphin ones. Now, the, these guys are kind of light on accessories and I will get into that here in a few minutes, but, uh, I think that these are some superb figures. They didn't really, they didn't mess up. You know what I mean? They didn't do a bad job. Now there's little things anatomically that make you, uh, you know, I guess they're cause for, you know, complaint for some people, but looking at them as a whole, it, none of it really, it doesn't really bother me. I will point out what these things are later on, but they look badass. I mean, in the end, that's what they were going for, and they look like it. So I'm going to go over kind of briefly all the little things I feel about this line. It's not so much a review as an overview. Now, keep in mind, like I said, it's an overview. So in the comments, I don't want to hear you miss this, you miss that, because I am focusing on the things that I feel like are more important than other things. Now, between my son and I, we have both offerings, the box set of the five-inch figures with the cool pearlescent uh, uh, you know, molds. And then I had bought him before he got that box set. I had bought him, uh, two of the individual Rangers as they are single, uh, carded. And I will show you those in the comparison section. But, uh, you know, there's a little bit to say about this because, you know, they're not remarkably amazing figures, but they're, they're pretty cool. So I feel like, there's a need for me to talk about them in a little bit more detail, but I don't feel like there's enough here for me to do a full out review, a big ass review on them. So as usual, you know the drill, sit back, relax, and get something to eat, something to drink, and I'm gonna go through and just chat with you guys about this line that I think was solid, you know? So let's do this thing. So the Legacy series, this is what I was waiting for ever since I picked up the Red Ranger from the original uh, Mighty Morphin series uh, in this Legacy series six inch you know, style. I was disappointed with the Mighty Morphin figures because there's just nothing to them and their anatomy is kind of weird. The bulkiness doesn't fit the design, you know, the original design because they were skinny. Now these designs, the bulkiness fits because they are bulky in the show or in the movie. And that's what I wanted. Things like the way the torso was just so floppy on the Mighty Morphin Rangers, it's not like that on these. So I was happy with that. Also, there's just more detail and you know a little bit it looks like there's more going on with them. There isn't more paint. They just swapped out white for silver. But a lot of the details, I mean, you can look at this and it's superior in detail. And I just feel like it's a more original design. I already have a bunch of uh, old school, you know, standard Power Ranger shit. 
And, uh, I, and I also have a bunch of Super Sentai stuff, and I figure, you know, if I'm going to have Super Sentai stuff, why not just have the movie versions of these guys? Now, uh, I love the helmet sculpts for each of the Rangers. As you can see, there's a lot of detail, and each one is pretty movie accurate. You get the overall different shape for each head and each helmet, you know, by proxy, which is dope. That's the way it should be. The paint jobs are pretty good. I don't have slop on mine. And I was expecting it because this is a Bandai America project. So you expect to have that. And I didn't have that, which is great. The uh, colors. Now, this is one of the areas where, you know, as a movie, a fan of movie designs, it bothers me. But I think overall, though, as a fan of toys and action figures, it doesn't really bother me to the point where I have to take away from it. The colors are flat. You know, whereas in the in the movie, they're pearlescent. There's like a swirly, almost semi-metallic sheen to the Rangers' uh, suits. Now, there's a version of the Rangers, which is the five-inch uh, series, where uh, they actually have that pearlescence to them. It's like a metallic whatever, each color, the metallic version, you know? And that works to me. You know, I think that, that, that works better for the look of the, uh, you know, of the Rangers. So the flatness takes away from the screen accuracy, but it doesn't kill the toy. Now these here are the smaller versions. The five inch, this is from the box set, the Target exclusive box set. Um, there's six figures in the package because it's the five Rangers and Goldar. Um, this was a birthday present for Little Strider. But I figured for the sake of this review, let's, you know, compare. So you can see the pearlescence that I'm talking about. There's that little metallic kind of sheen, the little pearlescence to the colors for each of these rangers, which is closer to what they looked like in the movie. Now, it doesn't really kill it. I think if you get either of them, you're getting good figures. It's just that you have to understand that if you get the smaller figures, you get a lot less articulation. Um, but the sculpts on these smaller ones are a little funky in comparison to the larger figures. I like what they look like, don't get me wrong, it's a great essence, but their anatomy is just all kinds of wonky, especially on the women. The males aren't so bad, but the, the female figures are, they're really weird, uh, weirdly proportioned, long and lanky and kind of scrawny and you can see it right here with Kimberly. Her neck is like super long and I don't know, they just look really alien proportion wise, not so much just the design. Now, I wanted to put them next to the six inch scale uh, alpha so that you would see that they are indeed smaller rangers and the ones behind them are the legacy uh, line uh, six inch versions. And you know when freaking alpha's towering over you or looking at you eye to eye, something's up. This is the Goldar that comes in that six pack. It's a decent sculpt. I mean, it, it's hard to screw up something so uh, over overall simple. You know, he's, he's not a shitload of detail. It's pretty much just, you know, uh, material pouring down on a body that's about the same proportions as the male figures. So, I mean, they did it. It looks like that's what he looked like in the film. I mean, maybe there was a little bit more shade to him or so, but, you know, lighting does it. Here he is next to the Legacy uh, Red Ranger. And as you can see, he is smaller, so you can't really cross-play with them unless you're really desperate to do so. And let's move on to comparing. Um, uh, this part was weird because, like I said, we have... A bunch of these figures. Now I had bought my son one of the small Red Rangers first before his birthday so I have the flat five inch Red Ranger and then we have the uh, you know prismatic special edition from the box set and then we have the legacy edition one but you can see it's they're the same figures just upsized and downsized you know. Um, you can see that the the one in the box set is not only prismatic but he is uh, translucent so it helps push the glowy, you know, shinier look. Uh, here they are compared to some of my older Rangers. Uh, Lost Galaxy was my favorite 
of the Power Rangers shows. I love the characters. I love the uh, the, the 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 fighting and you know just the the progr the progression of the characters. And I liked Lightspeed Rescue a lot. So previously though, that was the uh, six inch one that you saw in the previous picture, and this is the five inch one. So you can see five inches closer, but they're still small. Now comparing all of them with their swords, they all have that same new school red uh, ranger sword power sword uh it looks good the two smaller ones are identical there's nothing different the larger one has paint the larger one of course is more movie accurate whereas the smaller one it's for play it's not necessarily for movie accuracy despite having the more accurate red metallic on the in the box set I kind of think it's just a uh, byproduct of gimmicks for the uh, you know to separate the box set from the rest. But as you can see, like I said, the smaller two are identical. It's like the fishbone blade or something. <laughs> but uh, the red uh, Legacy Ranger uh, is uh, a lot more detailed, but the design is still the same. It's very alien, and I like it. It doesn't bother me at all. I know other people had issues, but I think it's perfect. The rest of the Rangers come with, uh, the rest of the five inch Rangers come with this glowing power punch gimmick thing. Uh, I think it's a nice gimmick, but I just don't think that it's necessary because nowhere in the movie did they do anything like that. I mean, they punch things, don't get me wrong, but this effect didn't show up. So it kind of feels like it's unnecessary and it's just, you know, save the plastic for something else. Um, you pretty much just have a peg on the underside and they hold on to the peg and that's how they use it it's cool you know if you need that sort of thing to give you value to the figures but other than that these figures don't come with anything another uh, area I want to talk about is the uh, biceps for some odd reason on these arms the male figures do not have a bicep swivel they got double jointed elbows though but no bicep swivel but the female figures who are smaller they have a bicep swivel what the fuck since when and then they don't have the double jointed elbows usually the bigger figure will get the extra articulation in this case why does a smaller figure get it why not give it to everybody i'm, I'm confused with that but that's the one area that i think it, it kills it for these figures because the larger figures they need to be able to assume stances i mean you assume when you see you pay twenty dollars plus i mean these figures go for twenty two dollars in some places i think uh online they're always like 30 and up um and you you don't even have a bicep swivel you usually think when they're bigger they have more joints so that they can do things like fighting stances which is like par for the course if you're a power ranger right because you fight martial arts is like your thing so why don't they have the, uh, you know, the proper articulation? I mean, that's the only kind of stance you can do with the Red Ranger. I mean, like, what if there were poses from the film that I wanted to have my team set up, like, you know, on my shelf? Instead, only the girls can do it. But then once again, like I said, the girls don't have the double jointed elbows that the males have. I don't get that. But then everything else is exactly the same. Double jointed knees, the uh, swivel on the feet, as well as a twist. Um, you've got a, a waist swivel. You've got your crunch, ab crunch, you know, shoulder, universal shoulder joint. You've got the hinge in the neck, as well as the ball joint. So I don't understand what the issue is there. Now let's look at the Zords. I was on the fence about these Zords until they went on clearance. I think I paid maybe 10 bucks for all the Zords, and I paid 20 for the Red red Zord, the Red uh, Tyrannosaurus, Red Ranger Zord. Uh, I like the way they look. I was, uh, you know, I, I felt like for 40 bucks, I think the Red Ranger, the Red Zord was, uh, Jesus, the Tyrannosaurus was like 40 something bucks when it came out, and then the others were 20, I think. And I was like, yeah, there's no way I'm paying that much for all of them. But at 10 bucks a pop, you know, I think I spent 50 or 60 bucks on all of them because the red uh, 
Tyrannosaurus, and so it was a little bit more expensive because it had a uh, voice. Uh, it has sounds and it has, you know, voices that are supposed to be from the movie that aren't necessarily so. But also, he's the biggest Zord, so I got it. So anyway, maybe he was 15, I think. I think I spent 55 altogether. I was like, for that, I'll do it, you know? Um, all of them come with a miniature ranger. So besides having really good, simple paint apps, you've got miniature versions of all the rangers that you can have stand up on them and then put them inside the zords. All the zords have like an opening that you can put your corresponding ranger in so they can pilot their zord. How cool is that? And look how small he is compared to the Tyrannosaurus. I mean, that's pretty close to what it should be. This is what I was talking about when I said in my uh, Shao Ta, ugh, my Common Rider O Shao Ta combo video that Bandai makes the best shit. I mean, from every uh, uh, scale, you've got quality representation of these characters. I mean, look at that shit. You can't tell me that that doesn't look like him. And then when you put him next to the Megazord, and this is the Megazord that is built from the legacy line because the legacy line they all came with collect, collect and connect pieces so you could build a zord and you put this next to the zord and it still looks cool because they're still tiny compared to them you cannot really use the megazord to fight goldar because he's so much bigger i don't know why they don't just make you know another wave and then make them the right size make a, a gold artist the right size this is the Megazord compared to the Rangers of all the sizes that we get. And you still see that he's bigger than them, just not by a whole lot. But it's the best, in my opinion, it's the best rendition of this Megazord. Uh, the colors are right. The textures are right. The posability is right enough. It's not perfect, but it's good. And he can stand on your super robot shelf and it's fine, you know. I like the alien look. He feels so alien. He doesn't feel like a Gundam. The other Megazords tend to feel like very Gundam-esque, you know, very Transformers-esque, which they all come from the design cues of the Gundam, you know? And I prefer this for the Power Rangers. They're supposed to be alien. Their, their tech shouldn't look like anything man-made. So this works. Um, a lot of people saying that this thing looked like a Transformer, and it really doesn't because there's no gears and crap just sitting everywhere, you know, so they can shift for the sake of, you know, visual bullshit going on, you know? Everything looks like it, it, things are closed off, you know? It almost looks like a suit of armor, like a giant suit of armor, and I like that. I like the head because that in, in the show or in the movie, there was like energy swirling around inside there. That looked dope. That separated it from other things. It didn't feel like it was borrowing from anything else. Um, the weird uh, knuckle brasters or, or, or you know, knuckle dusters, whatever you want to call them, guns or whatever, they look good. Everything looks good, but in a way that it's not blatantly obvious for everyone to figure out what is what. You know what I'm saying? And I like that. I really do. I prefer that to the usual uh you know super robot formula when it comes to the design so kudos to them for that as far as the overall body parts and stuff i mean they didn't paint much of the back parts of everything as far as the legs and arms go the front i mean the the body actually has paint on it the wings have paint on it but that's it but i mean it doesn't matter it's not that bad you know um if you look closely you can see that the tech is continued the style of tech is continued from Alpha into the Megazord, which is dope because in the movie, it was also in the ship and everything. And then you see it incorporated in their suits. I like that, the, the patterning, that, that, that crisscross pattern. It's pretty cool. The armored plating pattern that you see on uh, Alpha's arms. That's also really cool and it's continued in the Megazord as well. So I like that kind of visual continuity, you know? You see that weird scale mail. It's, it's like a, a weave actually, some type of mesh weave. It works. It's supposed to be armor. It's supposed to look like this thing can take a hit and dish it out, and it sure looks like it. The hands look real built up. I mean, I like it. He looks like he could, you know, give Godzilla a run for his lunch money. So, I like that. I like it a lot. I'm glad they went in that direction, and it really visually 
separates it from other robots that we've seen on screen. It even looks cool alongside Ultraman. And, you know, the two of them can get together and put some karate to foot to ass to, uh, you know, these, these, these monsters for uh, humanity. So all in all, this is not a half bad line. And uh, the, the, the figures are good, they're sturdy. You've got uh, several choices of sizes depending on what's available. Because like if you can't find the whole Legacy line, which was a Toys R Us exclusive, then you could just buy the box set at Target, which would be on clearance very soon. Or you could buy the individual ones wherever because everyone's selling those, the individual five inch ones. And they're not too bad either. It's just, uh, you know, weird things with their articulation and their sculpt. So anyway, this has been my look at the Power Rangers 2017 movie line. Uh, I've delved into the Legacy line, the Standard line, and the Zords. And I think, you know, it's worth the attention, you know, especially if you got munchkins at home or if you are nostalgic for the Rangers, then you'll probably enjoy some of this stuff. The movie was actually pretty good. The, uh design was actually really good for the suits and you know the zords and everything else and i think that's that's pretty much what we wanted so that's my story and i'm sticking to it um thanks for listening thanks for watching and uh i will catch you guys on the next video peace outside